I'm back with another guest appearance. After listening to my chat with Jason Hunter, photographic artist George Byrne got in touch to see if we could carve out some time to do an interview together. I was incredibly honored to have the opportunity to speak with George, not only because he is extremely accomplished, but also because his work is exactly the type of art that I love to see. When artists reach a certain level of success and attention, we sometimes think that they aren't accessible to the everyday person, but this couldn't be further from the truth with George. It felt like I was chatting to an old friend that also happened to be an artist. And I dare say that our connection to Australia, both being Australian and also the strong connection that George has with music, definitely helped there to really bond us. I highly recommend that you listen to the end of the chat where George and I riff on pieces of useful advice for artists wanting to print, exhibit and share their work with the world. Having the chance to speak with an artist openly and freely that you admire is one of the best feelings in the world and it's also such a great opportunity for education too. Links are below to discover, purchase and look through George's amazing work or just pop over to Instagram and say hello in the DMs and let him know what you got from this chat. I hope you enjoy this chat as much as I did and please share it with a friend or fellow artist who you think would benefit and enjoy the conversation too. Thanks so much for watching and listening guys and a huge thank you to you GB for coming on the channel. Welcome to the channel George. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much Lucy. Real pleasure to be here. Nice. Um, So I wanted to start off with um, kind of just a little bit of your background and if you could just share with the listeners and the viewers like who you are, what you do and kind of how you how you came to be, I guess. Yeah, um, my name is George Byrne. I'm an LA based photographic artist. Uh, I moved here about 12 years ago. I'm 47 years old. I grew up in Sydney, Australia um, and lived there until my late 20s then I lived in Melbourne for a few years then back to Sydney and then I moved to LA which I've been here ever since um I uh I studied um art at at Sydney University um majoring in photography a million years ago um and straight out of college I had an exhibition I was sort of pretty hardwired to try to do that from from an early age um think of photography as a way that maybe I could, I could live. Um, I wasn't too sure at the time, um, but it took um, many, many years to get to the point where I was, I was doing what I'm doing now. Um, And that, that's just a, yeah, huge chunk of time where I was just um, doing all sorts of odd jobs and exploring different creative avenues at the same time. I actually did music for a long time and released a few records. Um, and um yeah millions of jobs um but so yeah moving to la i I had a quite a um, and i moved here actually at the time without anything really set up i just sort of um moved one way thinking um i I got a three-year visa at the time through music and um thought i'll just see how that plays out and see what happens um so for the train i'm right near a train line here i'll be picking that up um and um yeah so I moved here um, in 2010 and and sort of just was very open to everything. Um, I was doing all sorts of different jobs um, and I found that uh, I had a very immediate reaction to the landscape here, which led me down the path that I'm on. And that, that reaction just led to being um, very motivated to take photos, explore and uh, I started doing that um, pretty seriously at the same time Instagram came along and that ended up propelling me in a way that just a sort of timing thing, you know, lack of things lining up. And um, from just doing it to seeing a pathway to do it professionally pretty quickly, so within like 18 months, two years, I was was doing that. So, um, and then I've kept doing it. I've sort of ever since, and I, uh, I guess the difference from when I started 10 years ago to now is that I'm gradually doing more and more work with galleries and that sort of format of, um, having shows going away, 
making new work, having another show, and that sort of cycle every year. Been doing that now for five or six years. So um, less time, all to say less time of like doing private sales and doing things myself through Instagram and all that kind of thing. Um, doing less of that. So yeah, that's the sort of uh, very rough outline of my whole life. <laughs> and now here I am. <laughs> I know it's always hard when someone asks you to yeah. condense yeah, through just talking about that. Yeah, condensing information. Yeah, it's hard. Very to, hard to stay on track. Um, yeah, because you start talking about yeah. one thing and you're like, oh, and then you and then you think like, oh god, like you know that happened yeah. and that happened and it can be very overwhelming. So thank you exactly. For, thank you yeah. for condensing it. How do I score? But B minus with that? <laughs> oh no, A A plus. Okay. A Gotta plus get it tighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So on the sort of note of style you have this like just epically dialed in style like your work is undeniably you as soon as you oh, thank you on um you're yeah. welcome on instagram or, yeah. or wherever and mm. i think that's something that we all really want like as as artists like we're all in mm. pursuit of of a style um and a look and something that defines us so i always like to ask people about like their relationship to that because you know, it can seem like it's something that's uh, was easy to get to or was always there. Mm. And I know you've mentioned kind of um, LA as being something that inspires you and has maybe like helped to shape your work. So if you could talk a little bit about like the journey of, of your style and maybe possibly how different your work used to look to how it looks now and yeah, just like that kind of journey. Yeah. Um, I, I always was interested in, um, shooting urban landscapes i guess that's the thing that's the sort of through line from looking at my work when i was 14 years old to now that i i definitely was looking for um interesting threads sort of painterly graphic threads mm -hmm. in ordinary urban settings and i grew up in balmain in sydney and at the time at that time, sort of mid mid late nineties, there was a it was a lot of transition going on. There was a lot of old factories in Balmain at the time, and they were it was sort of in that gentrification transition. Mm -hmm. So it meant a lot of empty factories or closing down factories and spaces that I could explore as a kid with a camera. And they were very quiet, and I found them very interesting and sort of loaded. And I would try to manufacture interesting uh, landscapes out of those sort of moribund, empty but loaded spaces because they felt like there had been so much action there and now they were so dead and there was, it was sort of a mixed sense in there. Um, and so I think that was the beginning of in, that sort of interest. And there was also of interest from the beginning in trying to make images that were sort of painterly uh, in a way and um, images that could stand alone and images that I I, I would hope that I could appreciate in the same way that I could appreciate a drawing or a painting. And, you know, this is in my head as a young kid. It was like, I think it partly I thought, I remember being just so <laughs> excited about the fact that if I took the photo, it's just done. I didn't have to spend a week painting it because I was painting as a kid as well and drawing. And I just like, oh, it's done. It's just, how easy. I could just jump yes. all that process and here I am. So there was you know, sort of juvenile sense of that at the time as well, like, oh, wow. Um, and I was also just interested in the alchemy and the and the science of it. I just found the whole thing quite amazing um, when I first came across cameras. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so that was there from the beginning. I think what, and I did that for years, and I, like I said, the moving to LA bit was almost like I found uh, – a muse or I found a place that I could adapt that instinct to something um, that I was kind of deeply interested in and I felt like an alien in this landscape and so it was sort of an endless endless sort of the endless possibilities within this space um, and I had the time and I had a tool that I didn't have before that sort of opened up a lot of possibilities. I, I, I wasn't someone who was, who loved carrying my camera around like you okay. or like lots of people who are more, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that sort of discipline. I, I was always really bad with that and um, I wanted to be better and I always admired people that could be more always dialed in, as you say. And like, I was always 
I found it felt like a bit of a ball and chain, <laughs> the camera. Yep. And then so what, it was just, like I said, it was just a confluence of events that led me to sort of be able to be in LA and then have the iPhone, have Instagram, have a sort of daily practice, which I was able to sort of take thousands and thousands of photos and hone this thing that I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, have a, a little audience of my own that, that I could build and a community here. There was a sort of real community here of people shooting similar things to me and we were all meet and have little group shows together. Um, this is about 10 years ago or so. And, um, yeah, that, that sort of came out from there. In terms of like zooming out and saying how the style started from this spot and ended here, I think that was just through the process of doing it. It wasn't like I want to get it to that point. Yeah, It was just like I'd have a show and each show the goalposts would move a little bit just because I, you know, I couldn't re- repeat myself. So I would sort of instinctively just nudge it here and nudge it there. Mm-hmm. Um and when you're working in exhibition in that sort of cycle, it's a bit like making a record again, because you're making 15, 20 new thing, things, songs or pictures. Mm-hmm. And each time you make the new block, the sort of DNA of the previous block is in, I found, yeah, was in the next over. block. Yeah, yep. carries over. And then you push it forward and then again, have a break and then come back and keep building um, on it like yeah it so that's yeah. really that that's been my process and i know that's very specific to what i'm doing and um you know a lot of other people it's more linear and just mm. you know uh, but when when it's t- when for me it's been tied to this process of, of exhibiting when it's your job and yet it's like it's a slightly different thing you kind of i think of it um it was kind of workman like yeah, to it, uh, where you just got to have it ready by this deadline, and you've got to yeah. sort of pull a handbrake on shooting at this certain time, and then you rake together all your images, and then you sort of you go from there. Mm, um, kind of like I suppose if you've um, signed a to a record label and you need to be producing like this many records, mm. so you, you do one, and then you know that in I don't know how, however obviously I haven't done that, but like in two years' time, mm. you need to do another one. It's like yeah. becomes more like you say like a work pro- process rather than just sort of off your own, totally mm. off your own volition of of just those early days, probably where it's yeah more personal and you've got this time for the project to um, carry out just based on your own constraints or how you know you want to kind of get it done. So yeah. totally, yeah, yeah, and I I think it depends on what how you're sort of operating as a photographer and whether you're interested in trying to show work or if you're interested in trying to publish work. Mm. Um, your the way you operate is different and i you know if if i was just making books um i'd have a a different approach to it i think i'd be shooting more i'd you know you put 100 photos in a book yeah it just opens things up so much um i'm really you know think about like 15 photos you've got to show for 18 months work i mean it's like wow you you You've really got to be like you were saying, yeah. ch- choosing one to put that in the group. That you've got hard, like really yeah, hard, as opposed to the book thing. Like especially if you shoot a lot, like yeah, um, um, like that's trying to narrow that down to just getting like, okay, I'm gonna go with this theme or this thing, or like I just find that yeah. really, re- really, yeah, daunting to think about. Yeah, uh, it's strange, but I also know that I. You know, the work that I've exhibited is probably a tiny fraction, I know, the tiny fraction of the work I've taken. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just the very tip of the iceberg and uh, underneath is this vast, like most of us, we have a huge cache of <laughs> <Yeah>. photos sitting <laughs> in a box. Yeah. I'm surrounded by <laughs> thousands of rolls of film that I constantly think of things I could do or maybe I should have a show of this or show of that or interiors and all, all these photos that I try to mm. piece together. Um, yeah. And maybe I'll get around to it. But all of that at this point makes me sometimes less inclined to shoot more and more inclined to go in and look at yeah. what I've already taken and try to find things. Find something that's that already way. already there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I kind of call, I, I, have, I have the same thing and I'm sure people listening do, like you said, like, yeah, this backlog of, of work, especially if you're shooting all the time. Um, I kind of call them like B sides. Like they're like my, my, like, cause Mm. they haven't been picked out and they don't fit in with maybe the other things that I'm known for or show regularly, but I like to go back through them. And sometimes you find little bits of gold or a new, 
Yeah. Like you think, oh, eyes, why didn't amazing. I yeah. pursue that? Like that was yeah. that oh. was really good. Or like, oh, that that's was when so I was true. using like this camera because I just got it. And then yeah. I just totally stopped using it. Like maybe I'll explore that. So I think there's a lot in going back and reflecting on past work and oh, me too. learning from it like huge rather than yeah. creating new. Yeah, always creating, especially now because we're very much encouraged to always be creating and not always from like a healthy place, like as in, mm. you know, creating for the online world and um, pushing out a lot of, um, you know, content, content. or art or whatever yeah. you want to call it because those things can get a little bit, uh, you know, skewed. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. I liked how you said um, you mentioned um, Instagram kind of happening mm-hmm. at the same time and the iPhone. I find that really interesting because they're two things that um, I find a lot in, in, especially in the film community, people complain about a lot, like people kind of hate on Instagram because of the algorithm and, um, you know, not getting reach and uh, the impact it's had on photography. And, you know, now we've got short form content and video is kind of like, you know, trumping a still image and blah, 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 blah. The way that's changed, that's something that photographers have a lot of discourse around. And then Mm. also the iPhone, you get some photographers uh, like... um, Dave, like Sorbet Weather over in Perth, like he takes great iPhone photos and like you get photographers that really embrace it and use it, um, like you said, as this tool that's always on you and it is a camera. Mm. And then you get other photographers that very like very much dislike um, the iPhone and say that it's not a camera. Feel like it's sort of watered down the whole yes. art form. And it's and ruined it because it, yeah. it's it's put it in everyone's hands and people don't yeah. appreciate photography anymore. There's like two sides yeah. to like these these arguments with Instagram and with the, like an iPhone. So I find it found it so interesting that you mentioned both of those to kind of be instrumental yeah. uh, somewhat in your career and your in your in your journey. I think that's yeah. Million percent. Yep. I'm of the camp that's just like whatever. Um yeah, me too. I don't hold the that stuff sacred. Like I get it, the, the people that do, like it's just a different way of um, seeing the uh, the trade or the craft of photography. But yeah, I, like I said, I didn't enjoy the, ca- the, the having of the camera so mm-hmm. much. I wasn't that into the camera itself. I, it was like a means to an end for me. So um, I remember the first time I saw a, a good photo on an iPhone. Uh, it was like an iPhone 4. It would have been Mm -hmm. I don't know, 12 years ago or something. And I'd I'd always been a BlackBerry guy and I'm like, I'm never getting an iPhone. Uh, Just it'd kill me. I know I'd get stuck. I just want to keep on the main thing, use my Pentax. And then um, I actually took a lot of photos on the BlackBerry too, which I've got this folder, which is like one day I'll make a little book called BlackBerry. Like really funny photos. But (laughs) yeah, I remember seeing that first photo and I just was like, oh, wow. I just sort of knew this is the mm. beginning of a big thing because it was a it was a, just a really nice landscape of the sunset uh, on an iPhone four. Yep. You know the, the, yeah, the first yeah. one. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I was quite the, young, the but I had the other edge, ones I yeah. had. Yeah, yep. With the metal edge, it was like slick, and I was like, oh god, wow, okay. And that was when I, and then like maybe a year later, I had one. I gave in and got one, but um, for me, it was like a sketchbook. But mm. it was just this sudden ability to record the stuff that I've been seeing my whole life but never bothered taking photos of me because it was free. I had no money. Mm-hmm. It was just like win, 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 win. And yep. um, and then you've got this free app which you can post on free. I mean, the whole thing was just like a yeah. no-brainer. Um, and so that process really unlocked uh, a passion, a, a for me, it was just, it was joyful. It wasn't stressing me out financially. And like I said, there was a community element to it. And I was not, I was, I've met, you know, hundreds of people that like to look at empty, barren, yeah. decrepit urban spaces. And you I'm like, wow, your, this, your this, group. This, yeah. I thought it was just me and Lewis Bolts. And that was it. And like, it's actually it all these people, people yeah. Yeah, that came out of the woodwork. I, I like that too. Like, and it was just uh, that was it was really like an epiphany um, to find everyone, and and then it was like it also became very competitive in the early days of Instagram, and that was kind of fun, you yeah. know. Everyone's like scrambling to get best shots and and the followers and the likes and all that, you know. It like probably unhealthy looking back on it, but 
it, it at least spurned me to work hard. Yeah. Okay. And yep. um, I had a daily practice, which you can't, I, I just think a daily practice in anything is so huge. Totally. Um, Any aspect so, of um, life, I think that's. Yeah, yeah. If you do it every day and you get and, and get locked in on it, it, it'll, you'll see, you'll see things happen. You'll see sort of an evolution. So yeah, to, to me, it was, um, it was very, very useful. Um, it allowed me to take unlimited pictures, practice, work on them, look at them, think about them, post them, get feedback in real time, build yeah. an audience. I mean, everything. It was just like yeah. this unbelievable aid. Um, yeah, and really like I said, it's just, yeah. it was a timing thing. I, I don't know if I started now, maybe it would be impossible or completely different. But at, at that moment in history, when I, where I was in my life and where all these technologies, how they all came about at the same time and me moving here and it was just one of those things where I, yeah, I hit a few green lights. Yep. That's how it felt. Um, mm. And it was with with photography and I, um, like I said, I've been doing it since I was, you know, and I, what would have been another 15 years before that. I'd been shooting. It wasn't like I just discovered all this stuff. And so I had this training. It was just sitting under the surface of it and it, I met, I felt like it gave me a bit of a sort of a head start because everyone got the tool and everyone got the app mm-hmm. and everyone's like, go. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I got, I've been shooting on a square format Hasselblad like, for 15 ready, years. Like, yeah, yeah, I know about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, yeah. I, I, you kind know. of primed for like, yeah, yeah, something to come along to ha- to make it easier for you to share mm. that. And, and like you say, I wasn't get young. Back. I was yeah. 33, 34, 5, like. I've been, I guess that is pretty young now looking, I'm being 47, but I I also didn't really um, get to the point where I could um, do this for a living until years after that. It wasn't until, you know, late 30s that I was able to, to start exhibiting and doing that full time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd been like, and I'm doing all the other jobs and um, having some failures and with music and, yeah, I, and I'd sort of, felt like it was, I felt, I think because I was at that point, point in my life, getting those green lights felt all the more satisfying and important to try and convert them and do something with them. Because I, you know, knowing how tricky and tough it can be to get a little break in the arts. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I really was at a point that I was able to cap, try to capitalise on it. And mm-hmm. um and so I did, looking back, go, I think, yeah, worked pretty hard. And I sort of thought about it all day, every day, <laughs> so, sort of trying to chip away at it. Um, but, yeah, so the, the, the work itself, though, I did, I mean, the basic arc is I started just shooting raw images. And now I'm at a point where I'm not sh- just shooting raw images and exhibiting them. I'm doing a lot of manipulation and collage and chopping images up splicing them together and okay um i'm approaching photography in a very different way um for my exhibition practice that is okay. i'm still yep. making normal photos in life mm-hmm. yep. i just don't really do too much with them and i at the moment i might have a maybe get back to that type of work and have a book or do some sort of shows but at the moment um with the kind of work that i'm exhibiting and stuff like that it's more along the line of this experimental um conceptual stuff where i'm yeah like i said doing a lot of manipulation and different forms of um collage and layering to get the results yeah okay that's really interesting like a new Mm. sort of direction or um yeah and it was sort of gone in little steps um started to sort of play with and it really was i think a byproduct of exhibiting big work I had a show, I was doing small works for a few years, like sort of around this big. Yep. And then um, I had a show with a gallery in Sydney called Olsen Gallery, which was a big, sort of the biggest single career break for me because they're quite a big gallery and they're yes. known for painting. And, you know, yeah. they're, um, it's run by Tim Olsen, who's who's fantastic and respected um, uh, fellow in the arts. His father is John Olsen, who's one of the, you know, recently passed away actually, but yeah, one of the most sort of known painters in Australia. Um, so came with a very high pedigree, that mm. gallery. And I yeah, think that was sure. a moment where 
as a photographer, I'm like, oh God, all right, I better get my act together and work out yeah. A, how to print these pictures big, like five mm. by four feet or mm -hmm. three by three feet or whatever they're going to be. And that meant a very quick learning of like how, what papers I need to use, yep. um, how do I scan these nags the best possible way, and also um, what's going to look best in that format. So that really started to affect my shooting and my thinking about photography drastically yep. uh, once I started going down that path. Um, yeah, It's kind of like it. a lane, you know, off to the side of, conventional if photography you know photography is like a big freeway i think where i'm at is a slight side lane where yep. it's, i'm with it but i'm also you're also looking at sort of the other yeah kind of different at the same time and um yeah it's certainly not the only person doing it there's lots of people but uh there's a guy called andreas gursky a german photographer um okay who'd be 60s or 70s now, he was a guy who who I saw in museums growing up as a kid who I remember registering going, huh, like, interesting, you can do that. You can manipulate images. And he would do these large-scale epic landscapes where he would sew things together, and but he'd bury the lead so you couldn't quite tell what was off, but you yeah. knew it was off. Yeah, okay, yeah, interesting. Uh, he had a famous shot of the interior of a... An Amazon packing facility, packing and shipping facility. Yep. Like, a, and he's printing these things like twenty feet by eight feet, like massive. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really immersive, but he would affect the photo in a way, and and he shoot on super large format, digital and film, probably mm -hmm. film when he first started, but now digital. Yep. And he would, he'd just change them a little bit, but keep them within the realms of believable. Yep. That definitely tripped me off. I was like, huh, you can sort of blur the lines a bit with yep. photography yeah, if yeah. you want, uh, uh, if you want to go down that path. Um, so anyway, that was the sort of original seed of what led me to go down that path. Um, but, yeah, having said that, I also have thousands of images that I still take and that I have in boxes that I, I would present, you know, relatively untouched mm -hmm. um, that have their own role. It's just um, my exhibition practice and the way it's evolved has really yep. taken me down that mm. path. Yeah, it's interesting how mm. that's kind of informing your work, like depending on mm. what you're doing. And I think it shows how, like what you're saying and your journey shows how kind of ever-changing like photography can be. Like it seems like this yeah. simple sort of practice in comparison to a lot of other art practices. Like, you know, yeah, like you said before with that sort of naivety where like, yeah, you take the photo and then you skip this this whole process. but I mm. think um, there's so much more to be done if you if you want to explore it. Um, yeah. And it's also, it's so simple and it's very, photography is very democratic, especially now, like we were talking about, everyone has an iPhone. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's, it is it's quite complicated still in that you've got to look for it. Like when you're a painter, you can imagine something and you can, you, you can paint it and that takes yeah. time, but you, you're kind of in control or if you've got a guitar and you hear something like you can kind of recreate that sitting there. Whereas with mm. photography, like especially if it's this sort of photography that maybe like you and me and, you know, like mm. Jason Hunter, who I interviewed where you're going out looking for it, yeah. like you've got to find it, you know, oh, so you've yeah. got to like hone that skill of being able to find it or know what you're looking for or mm. be in a place and then look around and see the thing that you really want to capture. So I think that part of it is kind of complicated and it's hard to, explain to yeah, people like so, people often message me and say i'd love for you to do a video on kind of composition or how you find your subjects and i would love to do that but whenever i sit down to plan it i always don't really know how to tell people that because the composition part for me is like very that's just how i see like that's how it should be and it, there's no other way for it to be so it's very Without do you find yourself cool. taking many photos of the same thing, or do you have a very sure eye where you, you know, it? you'll you'll pretty sure, yeah, yeah, like okay. I, yeah, I'll take different angles if it's gonna like be a different photo. You know, I can yeah. see two or three things there that could be broken down differently, but I'm never taking a photo unsure of oh, so maybe I'll take this one and mm. I'll take this one. I think a little bit of that though. I was talking to my partner is. Um, something that's imprinted in my brain from being a teenager and hearing 
Eggleston say about how he only ever takes one photo of something. He never takes. Really? Yeah. I, I, apparently I that's that. not true. Like right, he said right. that. And I think he says this things. Throwaway and, line. Yeah. He said it and it sounded so <laughs> profound and like this yeah. great advice. But then like there's a lot of examples that um, so contradict funny. that. So, but I yeah, always yeah. thought, oh, that's really cool. I love that. Like it's a simple kind of like a yeah. rule um, to follow. And I, I just took that. I love his work. So I just, I think it's kind of half wanting to emulate him with his fake advice and then half maybe me actually being sure that that is how I want to. There's a grain of wisdom in that. It's like Bob Dylan has a history of throwing off weird lines like, oh, this song was about my ex-girlfriend. And then you find out, no, it wasn't. It was just... Yeah, you just make it up. And He's just trying to give you like a <laughs> yeah. bum steer or throw you off the scent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of intriguing. Um, people like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's interesting. I think as well. Um, with the with shooting with an iPhone, like I feel like your work has, like you said, it's got that graphic, quite flat, uh, like you know, look to it. And I think iPhone photos do that well. Whereas, yeah, if you're someone who's wanting to, you know really kind of lean into like bokeh and separation and all those things in photography that's kind of where the iphone sort of falls like flat as opposed to using like an slr or something like that so um because i find i do i do take photos if i happen to not have a camera which is very rare um you know take like i'm like i have to grab that with my phone and i do i do i do like it like it's not like I don't like the, the way that, that looks. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, just because yeah, it is, yeah. like you can, if the light's good, like it's really bright. Yeah, it can. It's you just, can... I, I find it like for the outdoor stuff. I think it led me to think of everything very flat and two dimensional. Mm. And like a lot of my film, I ended up shooting at sixteen, at twenty two, or sixteen. Me like too. really, yep. Yeah, just yep. to get that deep, ex- and it served its purpose. Um, but for like portraits of your friends and family or your dog, like. I, I found I find now with the iPhone there's something just profoundly generic about mm. the photo. It doesn't every photo. Yes, just feels like it's it's uh, it's good. Like it's a it's a good photo, but it's just something missing. It's like it has no identity. It's almost like I wish there was a setting in there that I could just like choose yeah. from a hundred cameras and just get something yep. different. I'm sure yes. I bet there is this at least app you can get. Yeah, or like back in the day um, with Instagram where there was the filters so you could choose your yeah. filter. Like that would yeah, be that a little cool. bit that would be better than just yeah, like Maybe. just the iPhone that like I know what you mean. Especially I feel portrait mode, you know the portrait oh. mode you could just pick them from a mile away now yes. over it. Oh, they yeah. all <laughs> They um, all yeah, my yeah, my kin yeah. um the my son's kindy, they took a bunch of yeah. photos of the kids, they send you them every day and you know, yeah. like tell you what they're doing. And that yeah. we we were looking at them and I was laughing because I was like we're such photographers, we were looking at the photos like, oh, it's 100% yeah. like, yeah, portrait oh, yeah. mode yeah, with this yeah. like <laughs> fake kind of background, like blurred yeah. and yeah, it doesn't, that sort of falls flat. But but for that, yeah. yeah, really graphic kind of look, like that's how I like to um, to shoot and yeah. I don't get So you super- were experimenting with this sort of underexposed idea recently, right? Yeah, which is really different for me because I like uh, a bold, vibrant, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Ektar, I love, you know, um, but yeah. yeah, I've been doing that more for... Um, Kind of like what you were saying about how exhibition, like you're printing large and doing exhibitions from a work perspective is is changing your or informing your work, um, my professional work, like shooting for brands or shooting restaurants yeah. um, is is kind of making me more creative because it's making me break out of what I would do because not everyone mm. wants what I would do for their thing. So, yeah, yeah doing this underexposed thing kind of um, came out of shooting a restaurant with really low light um, and kind of right. being like I was using film because that's all I do yeah. with client work. But I said, like, mm. this is going to be quite underexposed because film has its limitations. But it came it out looking fun. really cool and then yeah. kind of boosted me thinking, oh, like, I wonder what else we could do, you know, with with this and really, like, embrace the limitations of film rather than because mm-hmm. people always kind of just sort of write it off and say, oh, for that situation, you just wouldn't use film, you'd use digital or or whatever, and I like to sort of try and push the envelope. The classic case of the happy and... accident, isn't it? I mean, you... Yes, yes. That's what I've found. Like, all the best stuff I've ever done is just from, oh, well, accidentally pressing the wrong key on the computer and dunk, <laughs> and something will happen. I'm like, oh, what was that? <laughs> that? That's how I made all my little breakthroughs. And yeah. I'm not very good at, at proficient with, with Photoshop, even still. Mm. But... um 
yeah, just repetition. It's 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 very useful if you want to try and um, like you were saying before, like find your own voice. Yes, it's it's like everyone's got one, and it's just a matter of do, yep. doing the yards. It, it it'll emerge. Yes. I, I, I agree. Yeah. On. I think that's yeah. the best advice. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Like it's not very sexy yeah. advice. No. Like people want like this thing that oh, I'll do that. And then I but it's like you just gotta like what you've said, like all these years you've put in. Yeah. Um, and just do it, do it, do it, do it. And then it'll just start. And then it'll... that's what feeds you. Those little mm. moments where the wall, you see the break in the wall, you're oh and like that's for me what would always be the payoff from all the hours, like yeah, hours of miserable driving around in the sun and getting sunburned in LA. Like, yeah, I, I haven't enjoyed a lot of the the shooting part. I actually don't <laughs> enjoy most of it. Ninety percent. Okay, it's just cranking the AC, listening to sport radio, and you know you have these little moments of bliss. Um, but no, it's a it's a grind. It's a job, and. Yeah. Um, Oh, you're yeah. very, you're very lucky. Like, um, I mean, I mean, not not lucky to say that it's luck, but I mean, in that, um, so many, like, photographers or artists, like, you're right where, so many people want want to be. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, it's. I feel like it's a uh, total case of just um, luck and timing and having a sort of yeah landing in a spot where I was able to sort of. I had a very natural instinct. It wasn't ever about, I think I can um, do something with this. It was more just, I have to do this. It's like scratching an itch. The mm. first few years of it was just, yep. got to do this. Wow. How is no one looking at this? I got to, yeah. and then it sort of, it kind of came from there. And I've had other things in my life where it wasn't like that. And I was trying for the wrong reason or, you know, trying to get desperately to something without, actually feeling very natural and um so this was a case of where it was it was better but yeah no i mean i it's yeah very privileged position to be able to do, to, to be doing it um full time um but um yeah you still you still do find yourself going the most of the bulk of what you do as a professional artist is just the work and there's a the, the icing is those moments when you have a show. It's a mm -hmm. tiny fraction of the whole process of, or, yeah. you know, you're printing your work. It's like 1% of everything you do is those magical moments. Um, yeah. The rest of it, you're just yeah. a lot of admin, a lot of yeah. emailing, a lot yeah. of chasing that thing up. Yeah, the more I go, the yeah. more I go along, the more I'm yeah. like, I feel, yeah. like I said to my mum the other day, I feel like a bloody, I don't know, telemarketer or something. Like I'm at my <sighs> computer for like, hours just yeah. and it's like email back and forth organizing this pitching yeah. this trying to get this putting this together mm. we need this information we you know and it's just yeah. like very again like super unsexy and not oh, what yeah. i and i think that's because social media like you say that you're getting that little bit of icing uh, yeah. like on the top that's what's being shared so it looks like this wow yeah. thing <laughs> and it's not same with youtube videos too like yeah. the grind is just like, oh, I can imagine the um, editing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like, all that is... like, I know a lot of creative people, um, very good artists, that friends who don't, um, who who don't aspire to do it for a living, mm. and they're very happy doing it as yes. their thing. Hobby and I am like, kind of, yeah. I, I think that looks like a perfectly good model as well. It just depends mm. on what type of person you are, whether you want your art to be your commas and your life and your income, then. Yeah, some, for some people, it's a major clash and they sort yeah. of cancel each other out. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it just depends on, on sort of personality. For sure. Yeah, some people don't don't want that. Have you um, found, George, at all that there's been any tension between those two things um, for you in terms of like, because that is another huge discussion with artists is, you know, you start making money from your art or getting attention and, you know, sometimes that can be like bittersweet or cause kind of, you know, um, yeah, tension with you and your work or who you're creating for and all those yeah. sort of questions come up. Totally. It's such a, a well-worn problem for people. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that, that that process has shaped my practice, whether it's conscious or subconscious. I mean, if you know that a certain type of work might sell more than another, um, mm. 
you're certainly going to, especially when you're starting out, you're going to be cognizant of that. Mm. And it makes sense to be sort of honor that a little bit, just, just for the interest of being able to do it mm-hmm. at all and pay the rent, whatever. Um, but you have to find a line where you're still pushing into things, um, testing the waters in certain areas at the same time. Um, and I, I've actually never had a super hard time with it, luckily, because I, while I'm aware that if I was to just do a show of black and brown objects, no one would buy them. Um, <laughs> I'm still just as happy to yeah. shoot pink and white objects mm-hmm. equally. So okay. it's not like I'm mm-hmm. forcing myself to go into a, a realm that I'm not comfortable with. That yep. was my instinct at the start anyway. So I was lucky that I could just keep going on a path that mm. um, I was super interested in and uh, and uh, to some degree seemed to be optical, you know, pleasing to other people, um, to collectors and people like that enough, enough that it could keep me going and yep. go to the next thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't have too, uh, I haven't yet had too hard of a time. That Maybe when I go my full Black Wall series, <laughs> 2025, I'll hit the wall and <laughs> I'll discover. You can get back a, to me. A and breakdown, say, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think you earn that right, don't you? Those, you know, those artists that, uh, yes. that, that at some point in their career will just throw out complete, yep. like Rocco just, with his yep. Black series. I was just thinking um, that when you were saying that, yeah. that, that a, a way to kind of, or like something that does happen because again with the Mm. music parallel like yeah you can kind of get to a point where you can do sort of whatever you want and there'll be a level of interest and celebration of what you do and whether that's because there's you know these really refined people that understand it or if it's part that and part kind of like people like you and yeah and and And, and you paid off your house yeah (laughs) (laughs) you can be like so you're like whatever. Yeah. Thank God that's so. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got made a significant enough dent in the mortgage that you're like, you know what? You know what? I can really run with yeah. this crazy idea yeah. now. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see we'll see how it all goes. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a tricky one um, for sure, and I'm sure that you know someone like um, Ben Quilty, a paint, Australian painter, has done a, I think a good job of that, where he He's navigated that well, managed to keep evolving. His work's gotten sort of at times more complex and more demanding of the viewer. Mm, yep. um, whereas he started out very pictorial, beautiful, accessible work, mm. and then he's progressively gone gone into things and maintained um, his his you know fan base, for one of a better word, collectors. But um, no, yeah, it can be a tricky tricky thing. Yeah, and it's hard to kind of when you have like a very defined style and thing you do and people like it. Um, yeah, I sort of made a video right. about this with mm-hmm. like Wes Anderson, which wasn't totally well received on YouTube, but um, mm-hmm. like where he's Why? kind of pump Cause I sort of said, he's sort of pumping out the same thing, like in a, oh, a- right. aesthetically. And I mean, all aspects really, I believe I don't, mm-hmm. I don't dislike Wes Anderson at all. Um, I was just, so you did a of- video just commenting on his latest yeah. move. Commenting, yeah. I haven't seen the latest yeah. movie. This was just before it came out, but um, yeah, just his general sort of like all, all of his films and and probably more so like the later ones and how they're kind of like kind of feel a little bit like they're just a, a replicant of like the the last one. And when I'm watching them, mm. um, especially the French Dispatch, I just felt like kind of bored. But I felt bad for being bored because I do like him and I respect so much the amount mm. of effort that's gone into creating what he creates because it's like detailed to like a whole crazy level like so I'm not trying to be like oh next like it's just yeah yeah. (laughs) I just um, I I think what I'd like is to ask Wes Anderson because he's at that point like he's paid his house off so like you can do whatever you want buddy why keep doing the same thing yeah so don't you want to just really do something really like because he could any so, film noir like yeah like it annoys it annoys off. me yeah. yeah like I just want Wes to just break out and just do something really and then and it comes out and people are like oh my god like and he, he doesn't tell anyone he just does it and it's like crazy new thing and and just because I'm sure he could and but then so then I think are you just leaning on a style 
because that's all you have or, point. or you know, really, I don't know. There's lots of questions for Wes. I'll have to try and get him on the, uh, yeah. on the channel. I think there's so <laughs> many different ways to go. Eh? Like you've got uh, an artist like Ellsworth Kelly, a painter who has kind of made the same painting for 50 years. He's, I think he's definitely dead now, but he fantastic artist, painter. You see him in big museums, but he, yeah, his painting just stayed the same mm. and he's revered. And then yeah. you've got other artists who, like, uh, I keep talking about pa painters. I don't know yeah, why. It's obviously I a big influence. No, that's good. I'm trying, to, no, no, I'm trying to write some of them down so I can look look them up because I'm not very, I'm better with photographers than I am painters, yeah, but I know no, that there's trying, a... It's just like they're the, I just think of them more because they're more, it's, it's just more of an established thing, like yeah. painters doing exhibitions, and whereas photography, yeah. it's a newer medium and yes. it's so, so much, you know, it's so... Think there's so few to kind of, few, and, yeah. and there's also not many that lately really like yeah. that have defined that this was on a, a um podcast, a friend's podcast, Emulsions podcast, yeah. which is really good. They were saying like, who are the, the now or the last 20 years? Like I can think of Petra Collins. She got really popular, but other than that, like, you know, like the, the, there's not that sort of Annie Leibovitz or those kind of things. Gregory like, photographers. Crudson, you yeah. Know, like yeah, like there's yeah. not anyone I can think of really other than like the last sort of like Terry Richardson was like really famous and, you know, famous, like Cindy. famous as, as his photos, but sort of lately I can't think of anyone. And maybe that's Cindy because Sherman. of the, like we're talking about with social media and, and like iPhones and all of that. It's, it has been watered down a little bit. So everyone's a photographer. So it's not as kind of, you know. Yeah. And also it depends like what sort of photography you're looking for. If you're looking mm. for, you know, conceptual contemporary photography, you'll find lots of people yes. working in that space, like Alex Prager and, um, you know, it's just such a small scene. You know, if you're not keeping track of it, you'll never know about their shows because they don't yeah. travel the world. They'll just do little shows at their galleries at yep. two different cities in America or whatever. Um, mm. And it's so vast, isn't it? The, the, mm. the scene, the, the galaxy of people doing art now, I find so daunting. Like you yeah. could name 10 people I've never heard of. I could do it. We'd net like, we're both Googling. Yes. How have I? And <laughs> yeah, like that so stuff, like, I, make, I make lists. I've got a list here, just artists' names. Yes. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I just <laughs> stick it on the wall or just to try and like remember yeah. and just have some sort of. It's really hard point. to keep up. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I, I, um, I have, I have that a lot when people say, and I'm like, oh, and then I get, I get a bit sort yeah. of like, FOMO because I'm like, oh, I should know that who how that is not, or, or how have I not awesome. heard that? Yeah, and then you're like, you know about oh, that? and then you're like freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. It is I'm like, like that. that with music more than anything. I just can't cope anymore with Spotify and streaming services. Yeah. I, just, like, I was talking to my partner about this yesterday really in the car hard. and yeah. we were saying with music, like, um, cause we were saying that we feel really stale. Like since I've sort of turned 30, like had a kid, like we're not yeah. going to shows. We live somewhere where there aren't as many shows as there are in, you know, cities like Melbourne and Sydney or like yeah. LA, obviously. And I just feel kind of, yeah, like I don't know what I listen to and I keep listening to things and I'm like, oh, this came out in like 2001. <laughs> like, have I not like, you know, like should I be kind of trying to find out what's going on now? And I listen to things like yeah. like the Henry Rollins um uh, podcast because he plays a lot of new music and other things but one, yeah. I find it hard to connect with things the way I used to when I was younger and then we were reflecting and I said you know when I lived in Melbourne like I'd go into a record store and they'd be playing something and you'd ask what oh what's this and the person behind you know behind the counter would you know oh this is great and they'd sell it to uh, you or there'd be stickers on the records like four fans of this this and this oh well, I love yeah. those three things so I'm gonna get this I love this this cover and I'm just going to buy this record just because I love this cover because, like, there's a good chance it'll be good because it's, you know, and we've sort of lost that, you know. Um, Curation. Yeah. That, yeah. That's right. So there's Spotify playlists, but they feel kind of like what you said about, like, the iPhone photo. They feel yeah. like, well, they have just been generated by a yeah. computer or whatever, and they don't feel like they've come from, for, they haven't come from someone. But, yeah, there's no, like, soul to them or. Yeah. or real sort of like these things link with this and or the record labels. Like I used to be so like, oh, this is the record label. Like I want to know who else is on like In the Red or mm. Sacred Bones or 
whatever. Um, mm. So yeah, it's it. I do feel it's probably part. So you don't find Spotify that easy to use in a really meaningful way. Not in a meaningful way. I love it. Like yeah. it's great and it's it's easy to use and amazing um, resource. I'll chuck on but, totally. It's yeah, really good. Yeah. Like I um I like run and I'll listen. I'll put on a playlist, Spotify playlist, mm. and I'll be like, oh, this is awesome, you know. But but I don't feel that real. But maybe that's me changing or, or getting older and not mm. having as much energy because I'm now more, I'm more creative and I'm more into photography than I was when I was that age. Whereas yeah, when so I was younger, I was, yeah, it's your, taking up. You've only got so much kind bandwidth. of bandwidth to be excited about things or be yeah, enthusiastic yeah. about things, I think. And your, your cup sort of fills up with one and you so can't true. put more in of the other. Like I can't be across everything because totally. I've got no. to like, you know. I mean, the music, well. I think on average, the, your peak connection to music has got to be 15, 16, 17, yes. 18. I mean, yes. you are, it's like yes. a spiritual yep. relationship that's so deep and meaningful. And I, I admire people that keep that level of interest and connection up in their whole lives. I definitely can't. And it bums me out. And I, um, I try to make an effort. But yeah, I'm not sure whether it's the changing technology or just, yeah, getting older and I think different interests and things, but I have not worked out how to use um, the streamers in a, in a meaningful way. Like I, mm. I'll, my classic movies, I'll hear a song on the radio, I'll shazam it. Yep. I love it. And then okay. I'm like, where do I put it? Yeah. I don't know, how to, I don't know mm. where to put it. I've got a playlist. Is that the right play? Is that? I, yeah. I just lose track. I don't know. And messy. then it seems like everyone releases a record with one good song on it now. Like, yes. Oh, my God. George, the, literally, so, we were saying this. We were like, there yeah. are no good albums through to no. like, from track one to one the last track so anymore. Right. They don't make them right. like that anymore. There's just one banger. And then yeah. there's like a couple of songs on there that you're like, oh, this is all right. It's kind of echoing that banger. Yeah. But then the rest of it's kind of just shit, it's really. Like, and then you think, oh, what's enough. the point? Yeah. But it's not even a song that is a hit. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying like a really beautiful, song that you'll just hear on the radio it's not like a hit yeah it's just a yeah. good song and even they don't even have albums yeah. full of just good songs it's just like one yeah like, you know like a mood setting beautiful song like yeah. you're like i'm not that. asking for all bangers just no, i'm just skipping <laughs> through like wait is this the same artist <laughs> so that's my yeah. problem i'm like so i just have these schizophrenic playlists with stuff all over the place and anyway i I'm, I'm I'm pleased to hear a 30 year old having the same problem because can you imagine what it's like being 47, 23? It's like a nightmare because I've I've totally got one foot in both um, no man's land generation. Yeah, yeah. I no, I definitely I definitely feel the yeah. same. Um, my partner's 42, so he's a like a little bit older, but yeah, yeah we, we feel like yeah. the same as you. And I just yeah, I don't. I feel like everything I already absorbed all of the music that I really connected yeah. with. And it's a lot, yeah. like I've got a lot to draw from because it's, yeah. um, sounds like it's the same for you, but it's my, one of my biggest passions, like, yeah. you know, things I connect with, but I just don't, yeah, hear anything that really feels, but I, I think it is partly that I don't have that like time and energy to put into it. Like yeah. I did, like I would seek that out and like pride myself on knowing who was playing every night at the Tote in Melbourne and, you know, who's on this oh, record okay. label and this person's in this band and and I oh, just, you know, that was like You could my, name the drummers and the bass Yeah, players. I was really oh, like, yeah, you know, good. and that was my thing. So, yes, um, yeah. and I just don't have time to sort of do that anymore again. Or I'm just doing something different, you know, so. Yeah. 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 Well, you're all doing great. You've found such a great niche thank and your you. work is really great as well. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Likewise. Um, I wanted to, I, I wanted to touch on inspiration outside of photography, but I feel like we've sort of naturally done that. Obviously painting, um, yeah. music, is there anything else that you, you spoke about sort of like daily rituals? Is there anything else that you do? So sort of process? Well, lately, to... Yeah. The big thing lately is we got a dog. Okay. <laughs> and that has been a huge thing for me. I didn't realize, I didn't really suspect that I would be someone that would love to have a dog yep. right now in my okay. life, but, yep. um, it's been really good. Yeah, I really love this little dog. So that's been nice. And a nice way to get out of my head and not yep. be on social media and not be watching a screen and just be like into a little yep. loving, living mm -hmm. thing. It's been a nice thing. I know it sounds maybe quite cheesy, but. No, 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 no. It sounds it's really been, lovely and it's yeah, very heartwarming. It's and it's similar yeah. to the way you're describing it. It's very similar to having 
uh, having a child, children. yeah, like gets yeah. that that gets you out of your like like own head. Like, yeah, he instantly someone excited to see you, which is yes. the how old's your dog. um? He two baby? and a half. Two and a half. So toddler, oh, right. I guess. Yeah, toddler. Yeah, yeah running yeah. around. So yeah. yeah, really gets you but, back but into starting to get real. life. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Very much so. Yes. Lots of starting with yeah. a little attitude and all of oh, that. Yeah. But yeah, it really gets you it's back so cool. into life and at its sort of base level and mm. yeah, off off your phone and and like all of that sort of yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Really. Yeah. Good. So that's been good. Um, I try to read as much as I can. I'm, I'm on and off with reading. I like novels and general stuff. Um, mm-hmm. but the painting's been really good. I. Um, as I said, right now I'm in that work loop, so I'm quite kind of quite focused on making work, and that's been fun. Um, yeah. And in general, I get you know I enjoy traveling and stuff like that. Like I find I get a lot out of breaking the routine every now and then. every few few months. I'll try and do something and yep. go for a drive. California is really good for that. There's lots of beautiful places yes. you can get to within a few hours all yeah, different types of absolutely types of, um, landscape and coast and mountains and stuff so try to make make the most of that um and then get back to australia every year at least once yep. a year so mm-hmm. always love coming home um got a big family in sydney and some family in melbourne yep so um i do i take i take the time to do that as well um but yeah i'd love to one dream is to drive the perimeter of Australia. Okay. Yep. Yep. And um, take some photos and make make a book out of that. So that's a project for the future that I've sort of nice. got pinned pinned in my mind. Um, I haven't seen like most Aussies haven't seen. Yeah, the no, vast neither majority have I. Of the country, I feel so. really bad. Yeah. yeah. So I'm so desperate um, to go somewhere else all the time and see. But yeah. then I haven't. I've just been Sydney, Melbourne here. Kind of. Yeah. That's really, it kind of. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fly over that's right yeah. see the mountains out the window yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm trying to make some space um for that but um yeah that's the general lay of the land but now i look forward to getting back to sydney in yeah January, uh, and next year yeah 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 it'd be nice to have uh, to, to come home and um yeah mm. be back be back in australia for sure um yeah. i wanted to ask you um but before we wrap up i like to yeah. try and kind of empower like my audience and the people that watch the channel who maybe do want to make it as an artist and I know you've offered already offered like really great advice and we talked about that kind of repetition in like creating your style and all that sort of stuff but Mm. in terms of going after exhibitions or getting your work published all those kind of things like you're killing it so um what kind of advice could you offer people because I'm sort of in that stage as well and I know I get a lot of people asking me how to make that happen and it does feel kind of like a bit of a a shit show to get answers sometimes or there's yeah. no linear path which i understand um and it also mm. feels a little bit intimidating and sort of closed off sometimes like yeah can totally. you just ask for like i got in contact with hota here um like home of the arts uh on the gold coast like i just emailed them and i sent them some work and then i got a meeting and now I'm uh, posting. And what do they do? What's their? Um, um, they're like, so they used to be small and they've just sort of uh, renovated and it's kind of like our equivalent on the Gold Coast here of like NGV in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. It's not as big yeah. uh, or, you know, grand. Right. Oh, so but it's, it's, a, it's a museum. Yeah. Yeah. Like thing, museum yeah. gallery and they've got like a children's you send gallery. send them some work and they, they like it and they just like come in for a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like come oh, in for a meeting. Um, it was, it kind of was just a preliminary sort of thing of me being, a possibility for like things that are happening in the next year, but it was great. And then through that, I've um, made connections with like one of the curators bought uh, one of my prints, which was really exciting. Someone like that kind of get in touch and want to buy something. And it was the first Mm. in-person sale that I made because everything's online and it felt very different to like actually pass someone. Also someone of that caliber who who's in that world. It's it's all the more. It was really, really rewarding. validating and, and really rewarding, great. Yeah. And then I'm hosting a workshop so cool. for high school students at the gallery as part of a program, yeah. like a government program that they're running, which yeah. also um, was really cool. And I was thinking like all of that nice. came because I just emailed them. So I'm like, can you just email people and just be like, hey, I'm here. I do this. So like the, the, this- that, that in itself was a great lesson. Yeah. I mean, you would be a fantastic person to be talking to people about 
the best way forward. It is a super daunting task. Um, I, my own personal experience was, um, feels like uh, a case of just doing it. My, I, did, I did a lot of it myself. I was very like put on my own show with my friends and I invest my own money and I was very down that path and then everything sort of jumped on board because I was, mm. you know, they could see my momentum. So yep. they're like, all right, we'll just, it's kind of like back to the music analogy. Yep. The A&R guy comes in and there's 50 people dancing to my band and they're going, oh, okay, so someone likes it. I'll just <laughs> help. <Yep>. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something that's already started. <laughs> started so that yeah, was yeah. my, <laughs> that was my uh, way in. But, um, yeah, it's easy just to say that. Like, of course, I got lucky with a couple of things that happened which allowed me to, to get people in to the gig. Um, yeah. But I think, like you said, being proactive is just huge. Uh, uh, like having thick skin, don't worry if you don't hear back from people. Yeah. Just keep going. Like, yeah, just write to lots of people. Research who you think might like your work. Also, look to other artists that you like. And the community really helped me when I was starting yeah. out of people that, whose work I would share and they'd share my work and your audience would build and you'd, you'd find this sort of community of the type of thing you're doing. Yeah. Um, and also it helps to find your niche. It, like what, what, what's the thing that you love to shoot or you love to concentrate on? It doesn't matter whether it's letterboxes or the ocean or birds or it, you'll, if you just have that in mind of like what, what, what do I really enjoy shooting the most and what, and that will help you, I think, shape um, your your work and the thing that people are going to know you for. And that's what you've got now. Like you can see, right? You've you've got a sort of aesthetic that you've yes. been shooting. Was, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um and that is the most invaluable thing, like you were saying. So um, I think those are all good things. What else could that's we? Great advice. Really what good advice. We, uh, offer. Yeah, I think like the being proactive thing is like probably the most important because I feel like artists do a lot of sitting around thinking about what they'd like to happen or focusing on maybe the barriers in place and sort of breaking those down or, you know, trying to um, as much as you can to like, yeah, advocate for yourself rather than waiting for someone yeah. to come to you. Like it's something yeah. I've learned. Like I, I, I waited so long, like this long, because I was like, oh, someone will just see what I do and then they'll pick me mm. or choose me. Mm. And I was like, why isn't this happening? Like I got really annoyed. And then as soon as I was like, oh, I'm going to actively start seeking it out, let people know that I'm here, create yeah. things, make the work that I want to be chosen for, then things mm. started to happen. Um, and it is more kind of rolling in now where people are like, oh, yeah. we want you to do this or we want, you know. So um, mm. I think that's a really power. like understanding that like you you have the power um yep. to a certain extent obviously but like yeah really empowering yourself with like your own power um and also sort of looking like you said looking at other artists and mm. how they've I love to like go right back on someone's Instagram page or their YouTube channel or whatever yes. and look and be like okay so you weren't always like this where did you start and then yep. it'll, it'll be like a little group show they had their first little, like you said, that breakthrough. And I'm like, okay, cool. So that's how you did that. Then you got into like this magazine or I don't know, whatever it is. And you sort of join the dots and follow that path. Obviously yeah. yours isn't going to be exactly the same, but um, try if you can to use that as like a blueprint to make things happen for yourself. Um, it, it, you know, if you do, if you are one of those people that wants to take it to the next level, or even if you just want some recognition too, because I think a lot of photographers frustration with Instagram is that no one's liking my work, no one's engaging with it. And it, when you break it down, like I think people just want to be recognised, even if it is just by one person, Yeah. but like in a very real way. So that those moments where you get chosen for something, whether it's leads to money or fame or whatever it is, it just feels yeah. good to be, you know, yeah, like I see you, you see me. Like when you said you mm. found your group of people that want to see like work you like and your community, so... Yeah, and I, I, I swear I cannot stress enough how good it is to just show your work. Mm. Um, it might feel like so out of bounds to what you're doing or um, incredibly daunting, but even if you're just printing 10 8x10s 
not framing them, pinning to pinning them to the wall of your local cafe and asking yes. thirty people there on mm. a Tuesday night at seven o'clock. That will translate to something totally inv- invaluable. Most of the time, you won't know what it's going to end up mm. giving you, but it, it'll. It's it's so worthwhile. It's so worthwhile, even though it's annoying to put it together. It's stressful and it's like <laughs> you never feel like the work's ready or good enough and all the rest of it, but you will get you will get so much out of that out of doing that. So that's one thing. And I know it's forget framing, it's expensive. I just mean make some cheap mm-hmm. prints, pin yeah. them to the wall, make them look sleek, yeah, and make a night and then you'll get you'll be talking about your work all night and yep. that'll help you think about your work and create and that really, dialogue around your work as well yeah. which is really and it informs when you go back to the camera a week later you've had that show you've seen how the work sits on the wall and how it interacts with people and what was mm. working and what wasn't and it's really kind of what I went through for showing it's exactly yep. what honed my ability to yep. sort of build the sort of aesthetic that I was trying to achieve it was it was yep. a really like a sort of um, back and forth thing or like a group process yeah. And the shows were hugely um, pivotal for me in, in terms of doing that. And that's back to your saying, if you want to do that, if you're if that's your yeah. goal, yeah, um, that's a really worthwhile thing to do. Mm. Um, that's great also, advice. Yeah. I love that. That's like made it. Yeah. That's made it so because I get really like oh like printing, and I don't really know about that much about printing and the yeah. paper, and it's all really serious, and it's know. a show, and then framing, first, and I'm like yeah. oh I don't know, like yeah. I printed my first show, first couple of shows, just on the local cheap. Two dollar print lab, okay, down the street here. Okay, like the photos were not the quality was not that good, but it didn't matter at the time. They were iPhone photos. Yep. I just printed them all. Yeah, I love that. That's so mind. good to hear because, like, yeah. you look at you right now and like look at your yeah. Instagram. And you got these like giant print. You wouldn't think that, and it's so good Started. to hear because it just like makes it doesn't make it okay because yep. it is okay mm-hmm. to do that. But you just yeah. like I now feel like oh I can I can do that and like just start yeah. really simple. Yeah. And like go it's for it. Start small and simple and just just do it. And it'll it's it's unbelievable how much impact it'll have on on so many things. You'll people see your mm. work, people will respect your work, will respect the fact that you've done it. Yeah. You'll learn about what, what work what, what work does what. And it's just a really nice feeling too, just to have your work up as as the statement, whatever it is. I took these fifteen yep. shots of seagulls. Here they are. Yep. This is a moment in time. Like yeah. move on. Onto the next thing. It's, onto the next, start creating the next yeah. thing and like take yeah. what you can learn from that one yeah. and bring it forward. And yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that, oh, that's, I love I that. That's really good. Great yeah. advice. Thank you. I think that's very useful for people. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I have one little uh, uh, listener question from Jason Hunter, who I interviewed last time. Um, he Jay just said, any... I saw his interview. So good. Yes. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. I, I love him. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, he just said, Do you have any um, quick bits of advice for? printing your work or creating a book because I think he is kind of grappling with those sort of processes at the moment like trying to sequence things and he's ditching it and then going back to it and he can't kind of you know decide um sorry what was the spot um (laughs) advice for (laughs) uh printing your work or creating a book okay so just general printing um I like I said I started out just lab prints and then um I just started thinking about I wanted the prints to be a bit more archival because I was framing them and mm-hmm. putting them in a bigger scale. So that's when I tra- I jumped over to um, archival pigment paper. It's like a cotton-based yep. okay. paper yep. that is a digital print. So it's not a, a old-fashioned um, light print. It's a digital okay. printing. So all my prints are done through digital. I, I think it's great. It might not be for everyone. Like it's yep. certain work suits it better. But for the sort of poppy painterly photos yep. that I'm doing, it worked really well. So I just got there through trial and error, trial, tried a few different papers. Yep. Um, and then the publishing side of things, um, that is, yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, – that's a yes. beast because you have to choose which cool. which yep. you can do it yourself or you can try to approach publishers. Um, for my book, I did it myself. Okay. I, this, yep. Not this one, but I did a, a diff, I did two. This is the second edition. This one, the pink one. I did yep. another edition. It's got a blue cover. Blue, yeah. Um, I did that myself. Yeah, I decided to invest my own money and just um, found some people that work in that world and just paid them, like contracted them. Yeah. Cost of me arm and a leg but I just sort of 
gambled on it and just thought yep. I'll invest all the money and ended up ended up you know breaking even selling enough to get to get it back so um you can do it that way as well yep uh, there are so many different ways though I mean you can print online there's really affordable ways to do it that sort of having prefab models that you can just do it log yep. all your information on I'm sure I probably could have done it that way but I I had a goal I had a dream of like trying to match my favorite Eggleston book okay two and a quarter by two and a quarter red square book he did and okay, that was always yep. this like a style published beautiful fabric wrapped book yep. and that was always the book that I held up as as what you would kind of yeah the like the pinnacle uh, that, yeah exactly so I, I went um to try and replicate that and don't be scared of trying to completely rip off your heroes that's the other <laughs> message I, yeah I love that um, too yep, yeah yep. you've got to like aim high <laughs> as long as yeah. you know you've got different photos to them and different yeah. words in the book yep. you can kind of do you can whatever borrow. you want yeah, yeah absolutely I like to so borrow. I totally did that um but yeah um Jason I think um he would make such a, a incredible oh, yeah book. he would There's so much great work so um I did it I just decided to for the book to be like tracing the evolution of my exhibition practice for the last five years that was the sort of thing as well I needed some parameters because yes. you can also so that was what I decided to show the evolution yep um and um yeah but so that's very specific to what I was doing. But, yeah, there's so many different ways to do it and, and really affordable ways as well. To yeah. Do, do research. Yeah, it's more accessible now than ever. Like, yeah. you know, those those things were very closed off, uh, you know, a long time ago and now mm. there are so many avenues you can go down. Um, yeah, so, but for someone yeah. like um, Jason, I think given where he's at with his photography, I would – talking to you right now Jason looking down yes, the barrel he's listening but I know I, he's, yeah. he's listening <laughs> I would um I put together a book uh, online and like a pdf or mock-up basically yep. you can get really high quality mock-ups now and make it look like a real physical book but it's just in yep. a program I'd assemble it do all the words make it a forward essay like just pick your favorite artist's best book and just steal yep. what you have to and model it basically okay yeah and then I would submit it to some publishers Okay. And yep. see, get some feedback first. You might find someone that's interested um, mm -hmm. who just wants to do it. Or if yep. not, you might get some really valuable feedback. Feedback, um, yeah, of how you can tweak But it's worth change. doing. Yeah. yeah, it's worth doing. Unless you want to do it yourself and, and have complete control and just pay all the money and do it, um, you could totally do that. Yep. When I did it, I, I actually printed 1,500 books, which is ridiculous. If I did it again, I would have done 500. I just had no idea. Oh, my God. And that's so, so many. It was COVID. I was feeling – I just had no – I had no reference point. I just didn't think it sounded like that many. And then when they showed up in the boxes – Yeah, I can just imagine. Like, Jesus. Now yeah. ten of books, <laughs> and it took me 18 months – to sell them and it basically took over my entire life the studio turned into a production yeah. zone yeah. then my studio manager we're here shipping them all ourselves yeah. get all of it and um it was incredibly rewarding and satisfying yeah. at the time well done congratulations yeah. that's, that's, Good to way sell to, all of them is like amazing too that's took yeah. forever gave away hundreds you know um yeah but it was a good way to get through the pandemic looking back on it i think that was my that was my that was your so, thing that you some people yeah. were baking like sourdough you were like you were getting the books out Baking yeah. books yeah. And, <laughs> and sending books and chase can you imagine how many people wrote, wrote, oh my book's missing i'm in ireland uh what should Are i do you? that was oh, no, my yeah. whole life tracing yes. them tracking them yes replacing them books were yeah. showing up bad at like it was yeah it was a thing um that's a whole so side too like the postage yeah. side and the getting it out yeah. and the logistics of that and then being responsible yeah. and like that's like a job in itself just For sure like part. tracking down the best book wrap that exists mm. only made by one company out of yeah. the uk stuff like that that i got completely obsessed with like every element of the stamp and the sticker and the, the, so i i went down the rabbit hole that yeah, was just the it way sounds I did like it. you did, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. I've got this vision sure. of you with all these like books, oh my and God. Yeah. yeah, that's so um, funny. But that's great but, advice, I think, for anyone who, um, like that's mm. you've really broken it down nicely and given your experience. And, um, yeah, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's great. Yeah, um, I have one more no thing worries. before I let you go that I wanted to mention. Yep. I was reading an interview with you and your sister in mm. uh, it was with David Jones, 
And yeah. um, it was mentioned that you, I think you or both of you are big Seinfeld fans. And I'm also oh, a big, yeah. si- big Seinfeld fan. So I was wondering, um, two questions. Do you do you watch and like Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yeah. And who's like your favorite, who's your, who's your favorite Seinfeld character or episode? Um, if um, I, I, I definitely love Curb. Okay, I'm not yep. like, I haven't seen every single episode and sometimes I find it hard to watch. Like that's good. I think it's designed it's to be hard to watch. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but no, he's just a, such a genius. And I think watching that show and getting into it was such an interesting way to understand Seinfeld. Yes. To truly understand it. Like, yeah. They're kind like of like Lennon and McCartney. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they're like Lennon McCartney and they break up and you're like, huh. You, then you just see yep. back to music where you keep going back yep. to music. But you That's just see idea. both their solo work and how yeah. they were just this beautiful sort of yin and yang that worked so well together. Um, but, um, okay, so Massive Sample fan. My favourite episode would be The Keys. Okay. Where they all – Put their keys. No, what? No, remember the episode where they all um, put the keys in the. They give each other their keys. Uh, I think it's like uh, series three, three okay. or four. Okay. Um, yep. This is called the keys. That's all I remember. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll have and to my other one. <laughs> refresh. I. It's not like ringing any bells for me, but I'll. Uh, yeah, like, I'll have to go back. I love Seinfeld, but now in retrospect, I'm like I really like three, four, and five. Okay. And the, yep. and the later seasons, I You're can not, take them. Not for you. No, yeah. Okay. They're not for me. Yep, Maybe that's because that middle... I was, yeah, I was in that spot. That's where I really got into it. Yep. Um, but me and Rose, my sister, definitely used to tape every single episode on VHS. Yes. We so did, new... did we. Yes. I, we've yeah. still got them. Like my parents have got them? like yeah. uh, Seinfeld and then Rage. We used to tape Rage, like the uh, music show at night. Yes. And that's how I learned about like so much music and then I'd be able to stay up till a certain time because I was really quite little. Yeah, and you would have been the, so young. For yeah, yeah. yeah and then like in the morning uh, my dad would let me watch the rest of the Rage VHS tape, especially if it was a yeah. presenter one because I'd be like, I yeah. want to know who like Foo Fighters picked or who like what whoever was on there. So that's how I found out about so much music too yeah. now, now that we sort of talk about it. Is yeah. Rage still going? I th- think it. I think it is. Like yeah. I remember seeing it a couple of years ago and they still yeah. do the presenter nights, um, but yeah. it wasn't as good. I never got into music videos growing up. Oh, really? I, I would have thought like you would because you're a very visual. Um, yeah. Yeah, never. they were huge for me. Like music videos it's, were like because of rage. Just, like, yeah. So I, I got a lot hard of style. to sit on the couch. Yeah, there's, there was such a great um, creative medium. I just for some reason um, – I never got into it, but maybe you um, were more like um, because my partner's kind of the same, and he's yeah. a bit more sort of outdoorsy doing yeah. stuff. And I, I, we were as a family, my family are British, yeah, they're very like indoors and yeah, you know, on the cat, like kind of live, still living that British life, even though they're here, where you're kind of yeah eating. So drinking, that's it. I could watch Seinfeld things. half an hour, twenty two minutes with no ads. Have my peanut butter sandwich. Wrap it up. That's it. <laughs> Go for, outside. Yeah, Go that's outside. it. Whereas rage was too much of an investment. Yeah. I couldn't. Yep. It's and a I long just also, haul. Yeah. Yeah. And listening to song after song after song, I just yeah. find it all a bit much. Um, but it's such an Aussie institution. Like, yes. Right. Yeah. Such a great, it's good to great speak show. to someone who knows what it is because sometimes I talk yeah. to American people, I have to explain it and it sort of falls flat because they don't really, you know, they don't. Yeah, they it was don't like know an indie is, but... MTV, like a yeah. more sort of credit. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. awesome. So good. So, oh, so good, good memory oh. lane work here today. Lucy. Yes, it's been so so nice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I could. I feel like I feel like I know you, and I could just keep. Yeah. Maybe because we're both both Aussies. Um, but yeah, yeah. There's a lot of for connection sure. there. It gives us a big <laughs> big head start. And yeah, thank you. For, it's been great to chat, and um, really excited for all the stuff you've got going on, and and for keeping thank a you. keen eye on when your book's coming out. And all the rest of it. <laughs> Me and Jason yep. releasing uh, in tandem. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Waiting um, for you too, Jace. <laughs> yeah. Where can people uh, find? Like, where's the best place for people to find you? Um, or come say hi, or buy a book, or have a look at your um, work, George. I guess in- Instagram's probably the easiest way. My website's linked off that, and yep. you can email me or whatever if you want to get in touch. Yeah. yeah. And if you're in Sydney next year. Or in a, in and around there, um, I'm having a show at Olsen Gallery in February. Nice. Uh, yeah. 24. So I'll be back in Sydney for that. 
a couple awesome. of weeks. Awesome. Oh, well, I think we might see if we, we're due for like a little trip. So yeah. maybe we Come can. Come say hi. It'd be great. Line that we'll have up. a little That'd opening. be great. Yeah. yeah. And we'll probably yeah. be doing a talk. Uh, every show I have, a, a talk there as well on Sunday. Nice. Okay. So yep. um, they're always pretty cool. There's some really good... Um, moderators that they get to come down and the, and the gallery um staff are really a good at, good at thinking and talking about art as well so it's usually nice. a good chat yeah it's nice yeah. if you can have something else kind of going on at a gallery show like that to to, yeah. to access and, and enjoy that's right as well try I to think. make the most of it because yeah. your work is only up for a split second of your career when you look back on it so so true yeah it's always yeah. really exciting to to get it up yeah yeah Amazing. Oh, well, thank you so much, right. George. This was awesome. Right. Um, enjoy thank the rest you, of your Lucy. evening there in LA. Take care. Thank you. I'll Thanks, speak mate. to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.